Let's get some thoughts from members of the public. Sir, your name, please. Uh, Steve Smith, Nigel. Steve, how do you feel about what's happened here in the last 24 hours? Uh, it's an absolute disgrace, but it doesn't surprise you one bit. Uh, and going back to the North Stafford Hotel... Yes. I can give you a bit of an insight. Me, me grandfather there was the head waiter for 30-odd years when it was the place to be. All the Hollywood stars, top football team, everybody stayed there. The big doorman, Tug Wilson... Great place, great blokes. Now, I'm glad he can't witness it. Yeah, and, and how does it make you feel, I mean, politically? I mean, I, were you a Brexit voter? Yes. Was controlling borders part of your motivation yes. for doing that? Yes. We have had now, over six years since Brexit, of a Conservative government that won a big majority and promised to deliver. Have you got a message for Rishi Sunak? Yes, he needs to get delivering because they've done absolutely nothing. Nothing whatsoever. And would they lose your vote because of this? Oh, definitely, yes. Steve, thank you very much indeed for being very frank. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, your name, please. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Uh, my name's Peter Wilkinson. Peter, hello. I'm not actually... Uh, well, I'm in uh, the Staffordshire Moorlands. I'm a district yep. councillor. And I actually stood for UKIP... Uh, when you were in UKIP. OK. <laughs> but I'm, now, I'm now an independent councillor. Good for you. Uh, but my, my concerns are this, this hotel was... It's historically a Grade 2 listed building. It's been there since 1840. And it, it was uh, owned by the North Staffordshire Railway. People get off, off the station and that's the first thing they see. You know, it's not going to be good for Stoke-on-Trent, it's not going to be good for tourism because they're going to get off the station and they're going to see an asylum, <clears throat> like hostel, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Now, my concern also is, you know, I, I travel to London occasionally, I park my vehicle there, but we're getting these asylum seekers. We don't know who they are, we don't know their history, we don't know if they're criminals... So that's going to have a massive impact on the local community. So, you know, everybody's got concerns about that, this because we are bringing people in and we don't know who they are. Well, I, isn't that right? I mean, in the past, whether it was the Ugandan Asians or... <laughs> you know, other groups of people that came to this country who genuinely were in fear of their lives, yeah. the genuine refugees, many of them have actually flourished and succeeded in our country and done incredibly well. Yeah. But we knew who they were. Yeah. I have witnessed, Richard, I have witnessed myself and filmed and shown on GB News people getting to the 12-mile line off Dover. I've watched them, filmed them, chucking their iPhones and their documents into the sea so we can't identify them. Yeah. It is... I'm, I'm with you. You make some strong points, and I thank you very much yeah. indeed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and we've got time. One more comment, please. Yes, sir. Evening, Nigel. Carl. Carl, hello. Uh, I totally agree with the council there. It's an um, absolutely shocking decision for the Home Office to do that. I mean, it makes... it uh, Just opposite there, there's a levelling-up fund project, which... I don't know if you know about that. There's a massive levelling up uh, project, and yeah. that's uh, nobody's going to get invest, are they? They're going to have this, ain't this building full of people where we don't know who's coming. Just a shocking, absolute decision. I don't know if who t are, are the officers talking to one another? Do they care? Well, the problem they've got is there are so many coming in. I guess from their perspective, they've simply got to put them somewhere. You look actually quite upset by this. I, I, I just I find the decision absolutely bemused. Baffled by it. I mean, Jonathan Gull is sitting behind. He's got to get behind the Home Secretary or he's got no chance of having a job. <laughs> I, I tell you what, Carl, I'll put that to him later in the programme. <laughs> OK.